world's first written constitution guaranteeing the rights of non-Muslims and this is under the Prophet Muhammad himself. This is in the early 7th century. If you contrast that with the, uh, the Christian realities, uh, uh, when the Christianity became a state religion, it exterminated its, uh, most of the time, it exterminated its opponents. Whether you're Jewish, or whether you're Jewish, of course, or if you're a non-Trinitarian, if you're an Aryan. So I'm talking to Chris here. No, I agree that, that the Christianity has a, the Christianity has not had a good history. Mm. Um, mm. Um, but why is that? Why are Christians so uh, belligerent and hostile to non-Christians or, or so-called heretic? Why is this? Well, I don't think it, I don't think it was I don't think that was the attitude Literally of hostile. the early church fathers. <laughs> I think it was. If you look at Augustine, I mean, he, he was like a, he was like a jihadi. He 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 actually uh, uh, advocated. There's a bunch of people called the Donatists in North Africa. Now these are people who were Christians. They were Catholics, but uh, they had a different understanding of. Well, I'm not going to go into the issue to do with baptism and, and the readmission of people who had left the faith. And he advocated that these Donatists should be forced, compelled to re-enter the church, but by violence if necessary. So, so and this is the beginning of, uh, this is Augustine, the greatest of all the church fathers in the early church, arguably, and he, advo and he advocated the, fi uh, um, the physical compulsion of people, and he based it on the, the Bible. It wasn't just an idea in his head, he quoted scripture. Uh, there's parts in the Gospels where Jesus, I don't know if he actually said it, but in the Gospels, where he talks about compelling people uh, in faith. You mean when he says things like, um, come and bring those yeah. disbelievers that uh, don't Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, Augustine used that texts like that in the New Testament to compel all. people, other Christians who disagree with him, to, uh, to conform to the Catholic Church, to enter back in the Catholic Church. Now, this is the beginning, I think, of the Middle Ages, basically. But this is early church. This is, uh, you know, in the 5th century, 6th century AD. And Augustine had a huge influence century, on people like Martin Luther and, and the Reformers, uh, John Calvin, Zwingli and others. So his influence is still, still very... Uh, and Luther, of course, who started the Reformation, advocated, openly advocated the persecution of Jews as well. The main thing is, which, which, um, Sorry, how, how which, the main thing is which, uh, which Christians don't actually Jews acknowledge know what is that, 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 to be honest, the, the belief in the Trinity, what, is, what, is, what fruit has come out of the tr believing in the Trinity has been a lot of killing. Mm. Um, Jesus says you'll know them by their fruit. So if Jesus says you'll know them by their fruit, then obviously, then obviously the, uh, the 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 belief in the Trinity cannot be true because there's been nothing but violence and bloodshed in the name of, in the name of the Trinity. It's great in some, I don't know. It's a bit, it's, it's some that's people, quite a broad stroke, don't you think? Some people did yes. bad stuff, therefore. Yeah, the Trinity, I, I don't think the Church of England today is killing many people in England, yeah, but listen, even, listen, uh, but, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, but in historically, there's some truth. Well, by that, he he are, are you a Christian? No, he doesn't realize. He doesn't realize yet. He doesn't realize that. He says, he says, oh, that was only a few Christians. But that 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 killing of of heresy. Right, would you like to? to uh, I'm trying to have a conversation here with. with, with no, no, but please. Uh, uh, do, do you want to? Oh, oh, that killing of her heretics. The killing of heretics and non-believers. Yeah, yeah. Was happening all the way up to the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was happening from like, like um, 100 AD to all the way up to the 1800s. That happened for nearly 2,000 years. That has happened for nearly 2,000 years. The killing of heretics and non-believers. Well, I don't think. 2,000 years. Do you even know your history? Heretics. You know, you know, for the first 400 years of the church, by the way, when the Trinity was first founded, the church was being persecuted. Christians themselves were hung on flags by Nero and burned. Yes. So what are you talking about us going out and people? These are Trinitarians, by the way, so they had the bunch of stupid arguments. No, there were no Trinitarians under Nero. The Trinity was a there doctrine that came much later in the history of the church. No, no, no in, in, in my view, no Christian in the first century had heard of a Trinity, let alone believed it. Uh, this, this is a misunderstanding. Christian doctrine evolved and changed uh, uh, over, the, over the years. Uh, and it's is well, well accepted by scholars that the, 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 the Trinity didn't exist as a doctrine in the first century. Where did that get? It, it emerged over time over, in debates in the church in the second, third, and fourth centuries. Um, but there were no, there were, no one believed in the Trinity in the Bible, in the New Paul Testament, or, or the, the first fathers, century. Or the second century, I would argue. Or, I know Irenaeus, people like Irenaeus and Tertullian use kind of language like it, but if you look at the details, they still believe God, that the Father is God. 
and, and if their father is the uncreated and so on. They don't believe Jesus is the same. So um, it's only later in the third, uh, the third and fourth century that the Trinity happens. So um, it makes it more coherent for everybody, you know. Even my guys discussing Unitarian. So if Joseph is in his Bible, why are they showing that genealogy of Jesus if he's not his Bible? The, 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 gentleman, the, gentleman's asking, the gentleman's asking why in Matthew and Luke is there a genealogy uh, going, uh, that goes back to, to Adam in one case, all the way to Jesus through the male line. Uh, so, to, to, but, but if Jesus is born of a virgin, what's the point of having Joseph mentioned as his father? This is a very good question and I don't know because it doesn't make any sense. Because Joseph wasn't his father, so he wasn't part of the genealogy of Jesus. You're so, absolutely so, right. So the Bible says he wasn't, Joseph wasn't his father, the, but I believe he was. Father dies, yeah, yeah. Well, dies, he didn't have a father. It doesn't matter who the father was. Like the father There's no point in naming a father for Jesus if he was born of a virgin. He wasn't born because he wasn't related to him. Well, according to Matthew and Luke, he was. Yeah, but what? Added in by the Catholic Church. No. Okay. Well, that's a different subject. Because the Catholic Church believed in, in before they accepted Christianity, they believed in religions and gods that believed in pre-virgin births or something. They, in, the, in, in their with, with their with their with their gods, and they just t took that belief from the from the old religion into the Christianity. Actually, it's actually it's actually there in the Jewish it's actually there in the Jewish Bible that there are other uh, uh, miraculous births in the Jewish Bible as well. If you look at um, Abraham and his wife. Uh, and his uh, uh, Sarah and, and the birth of Ishmael and Isaac. This is miraculous because Sarah was too old. Uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there are, there are miracles. This is not um, a pagan idea. The idea of miraculous births is there in the Jewish scriptures. So this is quite consistent. It's a Jewish idea as well. And that has no there bearing on whether. Or not, so I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a Catholic idea. I think it's. Uh, so, ah, oh, peace descends. Uh, <laughs> Um, the reason I won't talk to him because it, it's difficult to have a. I can't have a dialogue with him because he just gets very upset and angry and aggressive, and I can't deal with that. So. He he can be very aggressive. I wasn't trying to set up a debate between you and Blood No, I. Because I saw him heckling. Yeah, yeah. I thought it better to just have a coherent discussion with yeah. him. So I didn't, I didn't realise. Sure, it's better just the dialogue, it's the fight. You know? he, he, he gets very, uh, very emotional and very upset, yeah, and um, which is fine. But I, I can't deal with that if I'm trying to have a conversation. Someone's getting very up, upset yeah, of because I'm not yeah. lying. I'm just trying to. If what I'm saying is wrong, fine, then correct me. But I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm being sincere and I'm not lying. I'm not intending to lie at all. Uh, maybe wrong, but that's what I modestly discovered. So. Uh, the Trinity is not there in the Bible, it's not there in the first century, it's a later belief. That's a view that's very common amongst the experts and historians sure. now. So why, why did the church fathers so. in the early second century, in the second century, start believing in that sort of stuff, kind of stuff? It's a long, complicated story, which I could go into, but I'm not sure. Some <laughs> give us a little Well, summary. I mean, in the second century, uh, there's something I discovered at university. Second century, the, the, the big theme in the early fathers was what's called Logos theology. The idea, okay, you have God the Father. Who was Jesus? Well, he was the Word, the Logos. And yeah, and, and uh, so the, the, the Jesus was the Logos, the word that came from the Father. So who was the word? Was it divine? Yeah, it was divine in some sense. And so you had the, these kind of bits and pieces of the Trinity kind of developing. And then later on, well, who was this Holy Spirit? Was he, because that wasn't, look at the Apostles' Creed, for example. It doesn't mention the Trinity as, you know, I believe in God the Father. And it talks about his Son, but it doesn't mention the Holy Spirit as part of God at all. So it's only later the Holy Spirit kind of came into this as well. So it took a long, long, long time. Yeah. Is that right? So the Holy yeah. Spirit came into Christianity? Well, the Holy Spirit was known of, but, but who was the Holy Spirit? I mean, in the Jewish scriptures, he's kind of like uh, the personification of God who inspired the prophets and um, the God's action in the world, you know. Uh, he works by his Spirit. But is it a separate being or is it the same being? And it's kind of ambiguous. Um, is it like an energy you feel? Could be, yeah. There's so the Holy Spirit is not Gabriel? No, so it, no, that's a, no, definitely not. So it's no, actions of God. That, that, that's obviously in Islam. Of God. In Islam, the, the Holy Spirit is an angel. Uh, obviously, Gabriel. Some in people Islam, do yeah. question in Islam, in the Quran, in the Quran, yeah, but Some not in the Quran. Well, it's just a coincidence that the name, the words are similar, but they mean very, very different things. There's no holy, holy trinity in the Christian sense in the Quran, obviously at all. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just rejected. Ruh al in Islam, they call it. Sorry. Al-Ruh al-Amin or Ruh al-Quds, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well that's the spirit of God, yeah. but Gabriel isn't, a, Gabriel isn't an angel. 
he's, he's a created being. He's not part of God well, in Islam. I think isn't isn't the but I think that the idea that the whole idea of um, in Christianity that the ruach is they're talking about the ruach being the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the spirit or the breath of God. Yeah. But that's not Gabriel. As I say, Gabriel's a created being made of fire. I think angels are made of uh, light, fire. Light. light. I beg your pardon. Light. So angels. so j jinn is made of. Fire. Fire. And his angels made of light. Okay. Light. Okay. But they're created beings. They're made by God. Created, yeah. yeah. They're not. They're not divine in any way, at all. In Paul, Islam. How, how comes the Quran differ so much with Christianity? With what happens with Jesus? Obviously, the Quran says that Jesus was, you know, replaced by somebody else on the cross. That... No, I didn't. Quite, the, the Quran doesn't. In, in my understanding, doesn't say that. It says that. Uh, the, the verse that denies that Jesus was crucified is in a, a longer passage where God is criticizing the, the Jews' behavior. So they, they kill the prophets. They, 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 they spoke very, very bad things about Mary. And then they claimed in their boast that they had killed the Messiah, Jesus. But they didn't kill him, although it appeared to them that he had been crucified, but he was not crucified. So the appearance was there that he had been, and that's where the story comes from, I suppose, that most, most, uh, Christians believe. But in fact, he wasn't. Now, it all depends who's saying this. The voice of the person who's making that claim, if that is God himself, who according to the Quran knows all things, he's, uh, he, he, his, his knowledge of reality is total, then he is inside knowledge about what really, really happened. History, secular history, records that he was crucified, but the Quran doesn't really the Quran kind of connects with that by saying, well, it appeared that he had been, it looked that he had been. But it doesn't say, the Quran doesn't say someone else died in his place. But let's just say it doesn't say that. So let's just say someone didn't die in his place. How would it appear that he, would die, that he was dead? Okay, well, a, a, a possible, I don't know, but a possible explanation would be, if you look at the earliest gospel in the Bible, Mark, yeah. um, it, it says, uh, and this is not an eyewitness account, it's a second generation account. The Gospels are not eyewitness accounts, according to scholars now. But nevertheless, it says that all the... Uh, at the moment that Jesus was crucified, all of Jesus' disciples scarpered. They, they, the apostles, his 12 disciples disappeared, they ran away. Yeah? They weren't there, but... Mark, I think it's Mark 16, says that there were some women who saw what they thought was Jesus being crucified at a distance. This phrase, at a distance, is the usual English translation. So you had some women who had a distance thought they saw Jesus being crucified. And that is it. That is the earliest Gospels evidence for identifying that person as Jesus being crucified. Now, later Gospels, which are more embellished and, and developed, as we know, have more details. So even in John, you have, uh, you have um, disciples, Mary even, at the, at the cross itself. And you see this in, Christ in Catholic art. You know, you have Mary and John at the cross, looking up at Jesus. But that's the last gospel to be written at the end of the first century, long, yeah. long afterwards. But the earliest gospel has the disciples leaving the scene. Some women at a distance saw what they perceived to be that. Sure now, that yes. If you, if, you, if you go up now, look at any, that, that's, the, that's the New Revised Standard Version, the, the, la the language they like use. they weren't too sure if he was crucified No, the, it doesn't say they weren't sure. I'm saying none of Jesus' his apostles were present at the crucifixion, according yeah. to Mark. And the women at a distance who saw him being crucified, or I'm saying they saw what they thought was him being crucified, that's consistent with what the Quran says, actually. The Quran said it appeared to them that he was crucified. Mm. So actually there's agreement, uh, so in, in a way, between Mark doesn't... and the Quran. <laughs> but are you, so could it have been that he was crucified? But... Well, what is the truth? Well, Muslims believe, obviously, the, the Quran is the speech of God and that reliably, infallibly, tells them the truth of what happened. So the answer would be no from a Muslim point of view. Christians obviously believe he was. God knows best. The Quran actually, interestingly, in a number of places, repeatedly says to the people of the book, uh, Christians and Jews, that the disputes that you have about this and that, and God will settle these. On the day of Jair resurrection, he will make clear to you those things about which you disagreed. God will settle, make it very clear to you what happened. So we will be told one day what really happened uh, on the, uh, after we're resurrected in the day of Je But we're not told now, but we will be told one day. In the meantime, we, we trust our sources. Here's a question though, why, why, would you, why would God allow all them prophets to be killed by the Jews? But then all of a sudden with Jesus, say, hang on a minute, I'm just going to save this guy. 
Well, all the prophets weren't killed by the Jews. Some were, some weren't. Well, even if it's uh, so, so, so some lived, like Isaiah, as far as I'm aware, died at a ripe old age. I don't, I'm not aware that so, Isaiah right, got let's killed. Just say even some of them. Then. Yeah. Why would he allow well, some to be killed? Anyway? You're asking me in the divine wisdom why he allows some t to live to a ripe old age and some not. I don't, I'm not in in, not in God's that. purposes, he has his reasons. No, obviously there's a, there's there's people that live to a, to an old age, which is natural. But um, but why would it, what I'm saying is why would he allow some to, some to be killed? But Jesus, they're trying to kill him, and Jesus, and, and then and then he says actually actually I'm not going to let my prophet die now. I'm, I'm just I've decided I'm well, not going to let any of my prophets die anymore. I'm going to save this one. Well, no, it's not anymore. As I've said, not all the prophets were killed. Yeah. You're talking as if this always happened before. It didn't. Some were killed and some were not. So Jesus' experience is. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I tend to think, because I think that's what the, God, the Quran says, is that God, the G, that God saved Jesus from uh, the, the, the terrible fate that he was threatened with. It was a miraculous deliverance of Jesus. Even the Gospels say, had Jesus at Gethsemane, this is the night that he was before he was betrayed, begging God for rescue. Uh, saying, you know, if, if it be your will, please, you know, save me from this or ordeal. Muslims believe that God answered Jesus' prayer and said, yes, I will rescue you, which kind of makes sense, you know. Christians seem to then have to believe that God said, well, no, mate, uh, we're not going to rescue you. Even though you're a righteous man, we're going to uh, uh, allow you to undergo this horrible death. Muslims believe Jesus rescued, God God rescued Jesus miraculously. Is it also true that, so I've, I've been hearing recently from from some sources that um, the idea of the uh, substitution theory, mm -hmm. um, where pe Jesus died as a replacement for our sins, um, has only been has only been believed in the last 500 years. I, I, I don't know about that. The, all I can say is the Quran doesn't say that. Uh, if you read any modern translation of the Quran or read the Arabic better still. No, I'm it, not saying it, the Quran says it. I'm saying no, that. Well, no, you see, for, for, for Muslims that's all that counts. Because yeah. they say in the Quran that there was somebody uh, in his place. They were fooled, they were deceived. You know, and, uh, and they, they, uh, so was, it, was there a belief? Was there, there a, was there possibly a belief before the, five, before the last 500 years? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I've not heard that. The, the, as far as I'm aware, it's not in the crime, it's not in an, any authentic early Muslim sources, like Hadith, for example, that this belief is, is not attested to reliably in any authentic Muslim sources. Mm. Um, I'm not sure that's controversial. I don't know if any of the, the Muslims down here who are knowledgeable Muslims would disagree with that. I've, not, I've never heard anyone say to the contrary. But it is never as a popular Muslim belief that Jesus was substituted, however. That is a common belief. Nonetheless, not now, I'm all about that. I, 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 I'm not. Well, I'm talking about substitution. No, but I said substitution. I mean, the substitution is in Jesus taking the place. Jesus taking our place on the cross. Oh, that. That. Oh, a oh, substitutionary atonement. Yeah. So, so you didn't so, say that. You said substitution. Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. So the substitutionary atonement theory was. I heard that was only that has only been uh, believed in the last 500 years. But by who? By Christians. No, it's saying Paul. It's saying Paul's letters. He teaches it. Jesus died in our place. It's absolutely explicit. It's there in Galatians, it's there in 1 Corinthians. It was believed by, Christ by some Christians very early on. I don't think Jesus' disciples believed that, but Paul certainly believed it because we have his writings. But Paul never met Jesus. He never knew him. But he was at... He had a vision, yeah, he had a vision, this is true. He calls it a vision, the road to Damascus, if you look in, in the book of Acts, he calls what, his encounter with the resurrected Jesus a vision. I don't doubt he had a vision. Lots of people have visions. Virgin Mary, Jesus, Buddha, my boss. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't have a vision of him, thank goodness. No, I mean, lots of visions. Visions are commonplace in the history of world religions. It doesn't mean that they correspond to an objective reality. And the people who were with Paul when he had this vision of the resurrected Jesus, in one of the accounts, they saw nothing. Actually says that in the book of Acts. There are three accounts of the vision, and in one of the stories, I think it's Acts 27 or 28. Yeah, I saw the contradiction. It mentions that people were with him, and this is Paul who boasts that this is Jesus appeared to the disciples, and then he appeared to me as as to one untimely born. I think great, he appeared to you. Isn't it? So he appeared to you, Paul, and no one saw it in one account. Yeah. So, and you base we base our religion on that. 
on an appearance. Even Muslim people say, ah, oh, but in Islam you believe that who witnessed that doesn't Muhammad received bit? revelations from God? But actually people did doesn't witness it. it. it, in, 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 they, they, it hang on a second. In some places, there are in authentic hadith, where a man dressed in whiter than white clothing with black hair and so on actually came along and sat with Prophet Muhammad, upon in peace, with, with, with Sahaba there, companions, and asked Muhammad about his religion. Yeah, so what is, what, is, what is it you should believe? And he talks about we believe in one God. And then Muhammad said, well, do you realize who that was? That was Gabriel, the archangel Gabriel himself, who, who was interrogating the Prophet about his beliefs. So the Sahaba actually met Gabriel, who was the agent of revelation, the conveyor the, of revelation to Muhammad. But no one saw, when Paul saw the risen Jesus, no one who with him, this is a bodily resurrection of Jesus from the dead, by the way, apparently. No one saw it. So if I, if I had been there with my iPhone, hi Paul, you're seeing Jesus, yeah? Doesn't it say Don't see one, it. Doesn't it say in one bit that, that um, the, the companions that were with Paul, uh, one bit it says they didn't see him, only Paul saw him. And then yeah. another bit says that they did see him. Yes, another account said they did. But, yeah. what, but what did they see? They saw a light. Do you remember that? They, yeah, they, they saw a light. So even on the other story, because there are three different versions, they saw a light. Well, okay, I believe they saw a light. I mean, it's possible. But what does that prove? You know? Some people see Vishnu, some people see Buddha, some people see the Virgin Mary, some people see Tony Jesus, Blair. some people see Tony Blair. Tony Blair? Some people see all sorts of things. If you had a vision now, <laughs> if, if Jesus came to you in a vision now and said, Paul, believe in me. I do believe in Jesus. I'd say, Amen. <laughs> I believe in Jesus, <laughs> but I believe in all the other prophets as well, not yeah, just Jesus. If, the, if Jesus is the Messiah... Yeah, I believe he's the Messiah. Yeah, but, then, the, but, you, but you don't believe that. <laughs> I do! Not, not, With all my heart, I believe so Jesus is the Messiah. You, you, say you, you say you believe. <laughs> yeah, how can you, you... So you can't... So don't tell me I don't when I do. You're telling me what no, I no, really no, think. No, you, no, you can't no, do that. No, <laughs> if you truly believe that he was the Messiah... Now, the, the, the Jews asked the Jews this and ask anybody that knows about Jesus. Uh, the, uh, the, um, they'll, they'll tell you that the role of the Messiah is to, is to, is to unite Jew and Gentile in the worship of God to bring about truth and, uh, and love and, and unity with, uh, between God and man. So if that's the case, you should be going to the Messiah and, and going to him for teaching instead of someone else. I, I do accept the teaching of the Messiah. Well, why do you think I don't? I don't get why you think I reject the Messiah. I do accept he's the Messiah. But let, let, me, let me say one thing. To my knowledge, no, no Jew prior to Christianity ever believed that the Jewish Messiah would be what Christians believe about the Jewish Messiah, about Jesus. No Jew expected the Messiah to be God or, no, I know, I know. or to be someone who would die on the cross as a substitution for our sin or having died would be raised again from the third, on the third day. No Jew expected Lawrence, this or believed this at all. So this is a completely new belief that no Jew ever expected. It's not there in the Jewish scriptures either. The Muslim belief is that he was a human being, that he was not God, that he didn't die for our sins, and that he brought a, a message of um, a message to the Jews, which we can go into. But it's much closer to the historical realities than the Christian belief. Here's another thing that gets me: the three days. So Easter, Friday, Saturday, and he's risen on Sunday. That's only two days. No, he, he died on a Thursday, I think. Well, they say it's Friday. Isn't it? There is that too. Uh, but he died in the middle of the week. The but the point week. is that there was no Jewish expectation prior to Christianity that the Messiah would die. On the contrary, the Messiah is not supposed to die, which is actually Muslim belief, by the way, um, and, uh, and would be uh, a go, go, returned to God. So the Muslim understanding of Jesus as Messiah is much closer to reality than the Christian understanding ever was. I mean, by Christian, I mean what Paul taught. Um, no Jew ever expected the Messiah would die for their sins. He's supposed to be victorious. He's supposed to uh, bring a deliverance to Israel, particularly from the, uh, the overlords, the oppressors, be they the Romans or the Greeks, however. But maybe he did, and, he, did was, he was a deliverer. And Jesus will do that. According to Muslims, he will do that one day when he returns. He, he will um, successfully do that. But do you not think that, maybe so. he was a deliverer, but not in the way people think of, it, think of it? In what way, then? He came to show us how to conquer our sin. Okay, how did he do that? Give me an example. By by dealing with by by dealing with the, the, by 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 take 
by dealing with um, uh, um, showing us sh showing us how to deal with our internal internal problems, our hate, our anger. Our, our pride, um, showing us how to overcome it. I mean, Jesus says that we have to cleanse the inside of the cup. The Bible doesn't talk about many things about there like this, but he talks about the secrets of the kingdom, he talks about the... <laughs> <laughs> he, to he talks about the secrets of the yeah. kingdom, he talks about t telling us how to overcome yeah. our pride. So, Christopher, how does the Jewish Bible talk about the Messiah? What's his role according to the Jewish scriptures? He's, uh, that's the question. That's the point. It's not. It's not as you described at all. It's nothing to do with that. Okay. This is not what the Messiah. He's a basically an anointed king. What's the Messiah? He's an anointed king. That's yeah. what it means. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a king like David, which is why David, uh, Jesus was hailed in the Gospels as son, uh, 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 a son of David. It wasn't a random thing. That's, that's identifying him as a messianic figure. Nothing to do with dying on the cross or being a sin offering, or being a substitutionary atonement, or being a way that man, God is reconciled, sorry, man is reconciled with God. All this stuff, all this Christian theology is completely absent from the Jewish understanding of the Messiah in the Jewish Bible. Nothing to do with it at all. He's supposed to be like a king, like David, who brings a deliverance to Israel. The people, Jewish people, and other things, there are other things as well. So how is but, he supposed to bring deliverance to the world then? Uh, well, ultimately, he's supposed to bring in this utopian uh, world order where, um, you know, where the, the, the lion and the sheep, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. coexist and our, our, our weapons are, uh, yeah. So this is yet to happen. Islamically, in es Islamic eschatology, this is yet to happen. So Jesus still will do this. But for, Muslim, uh, for Christians, it's all to do with his death on the cross. But that's not the Jewish expectation at all. That's something that came from, from Paul and, and people like him. No Jew expected this. This is why they didn't. This is why I Jews think, did not believe not, in Christianity. It's because it's not in their scriptures. It's not because they were hard of heart. Okay, they, they should have believed in Jesus because he was the, the Messiah. But the way that Paul presented him, they didn't believe in that. And if you read the book of Acts, Paul goes around. What's he do around the Mediterranean? He goes to these synagogues, first of all. That's his modus operandi. He preaches his gospel. They reject him, of course, but why do they reject him? Because there's nothing in their scriptures that tells them that this is going to happen. By the way, you know, you it's not a message they're expecting to hear. And Deuteronomy warns the Jews about listening to these strange ideas that don't come from God. You know, it's not according to Moses' teaching. You know, Moses is a prophet of God as well. The Christian message is not what they expect from uh, followers of Moses. Yeah. It's just not expected. So they reject Paul. But unfortunately, they reject Jesus as well, who was a genuine prophet, a messiah. By the way, you know I don't believe, I no longer believe that Jesus died for my sin. What I believe, the reason why I believe Jesus went to the cross, I know that sounds like but um, uh, the reason why I believe Jesus went to the cross was to show us, as an example, to show us how we how to overcome sin in our life. How is a man being excruciatingly tortured to death on the cross an example for us to overcome sin in our lives? I just don't get it. How is a death of a guy on a cross 2,000 years ago any help to me in the way you describe? I don't get it. Because he says if you deal with your, if you deal with your sin... If who, who says? No, he doesn't say that. But no, but who's he anyway? That I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, okay. And the Bible says, he who overcomes, I will grant to be a pillar in the yeah. temple of my So, so how does a man being crucified to death 2,000 years ago in downtown Jerusalem possibly help me with my sin? Because he's showing, he's, no, cause he's showing you, he's showing you the, the highest amount, the highest love we're supposed to have for each other. But how's a man being tortured to death give me examples of how we love each other? I don't, you see, I, I, don't, I still don't get it. You need to explain Cause, some more. Cause I don't get said, it. Because he says there's no greater love than, 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 a, than a, a, man, a, a man willing to die for his friends. Uh -huh. Well, there is a greater love. So our, our love for God is greater than our love for our, our, our man. Our love for God should always be much greater than for any creature. Love for family, love for wife, love for and I don't see why we need a man being tortured to death to show us that. How does that demonstrate that? There are many examples uh, throughout history of saints and prophets and uh, messengers who show great love for God. We don't need to show them being tortured to think, oh, well, that really impresses me. How does that help me to learn how to love God? Because they didn't know how to carry their cross and, 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 and show unity with one another, the Jews. They didn't, they didn't know how to do it. Didn't they? I thought, what do you mean they didn't know how to carry their cross? What's carrying their cross mean? Sorry. 
carrying your burdens and like carrying your carrying your carrying your like like um, uh, okay. your, your putting to death. But it means putting to death your. I still don't understand how a man being tortured to death on the cross helps me to love God more. I don't get it. Well, what? It's the level of love he had. But he's been tortured to death by Romans. How's that demonstrating love for God? I don't get it. Seriously. What's it got to do with loving God? Being tortured to death on the cross. Can you explain how a man being tortured to death by Romans is going to help me to love God more? Because it, mean, it means, it just means that it shows you that how, it shows you that how, um, no matter what, the, the, the truth, the, the love of truth and the love of God, you should go, you should be willing to go to your death to bring the, to bring the, the light of truth to people. Right. Yeah. There are lots of people who went to their deaths because of, because of their obedience to God, the prophets, for example, the other, you mentioned these other prophets. Yeah, so, so, so. So, so a Jesus example, if it is an example of that, I'm not sure it is, is not unique. There are many examples of people who gave their lives, people who were tort tortured horribly. Um, some of the Sahaba, some of the Muslims in, in history were uh, uh, martyred uh, for the love of God. Uh, I don't see why... Yeah, so as long as we, Jesus said, remain in my love and you'll be safe. As long as we remain in that love that he showed us, even a Muslim... But he didn't show us love by being tortured to death on the cross. I just don't see it. How is that demonstrating anything other than a, a pitiable man being crucified and horribly tortured to death by the Roman authority? There's nothing to do with the love of God in that. That's just really, really sad and unfortunate. But anyway, Muslims don't believe that happened anyway because God... Uh, Heard, heard Jesus' prayer and us, rescued him. He's basically showing us how, in, in a way, he's showing us how to overcome evil. Okay, I don't think it's very helpful. A man being tortured to death, I don't need that kind of gruesome, grisly example. I, 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 I must have a more kind of, I can't relate to that. A man who's tortured to death thousands of years ago, it's not, I can't relate to that. I need contemporary examples of people who manifest God's love and obedience. There are plenty of people I know, Muslims mainly, who do that anyway. I don't need an example of a man horribly tortured death thousands of years ago to do that. It's, it's not relevant to my life. Uh, Jesus' de alleged death anyway, according to the Quran, didn't happen. So we're dealing here with something that is a fiction, according to Muslims anyway. It's not really an example that didn't happen. That's the problem. If you take the Quran, yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, okay. Um, Assuming it does, and I know that people, some people would say that, but I, I think it does deny his crucifixion. Um, then there isn't an example for that anyway. The thing is, the thing is, with Muslims, there's so many Muslims are in a, in a complete mess when it comes to knowing what Jesus is. Are they? I've spoken to so many Muslims. How are they in a mess? I've, because I've spoken to so many Muslims. Yeah, but how are they in a mess? Sorry, I, because they because they diff, they all differ. Uh, not my experience. We have different experiences. But in my experience, virtually all Muslims believe that Jesus wasn't crucified. Oh yeah, they believe that. But well yeah, well they are then. What's the mess? They, they, Where's the mess in that? They, they don't because they don't they don't because when I say to, when I say to them, okay, what happened then? They they'll, they'll tell me different stories. What do you mean? Oh, what happened then? What like, do you mean? For example, they'll say, oh, uh, some uh, they'll say that. Um, some say that um, uh, uh, when it when it when it comes to being nailed on the cross, uh, they quickly some, that he was quickly changed and then taken up to heaven. Some believe some believe that um, some believe that at the Last Supper uh, he asked he asked Peter to take his place on the cross uh, when they were going when, when the Romans were going to take him. So he so Peter took his place on the cross. Yeah, okay. Some well, people believe okay. so many different things okay. that you can't really. Can't, can't it's just speculation, but, but you see, it's not important for Muslim faith, it's not important what happened to Jesus. Uh, well, other, well, let me explain. Other than the fact that he wasn't crucified, because our salvation is not based on that. It's, it's based on the mercy of God and our belief in him and doing good works. So it's actually irrelevant, which is why the Quran takes only a, a, a few verses or even one verse to talk, to, to talk about this, because that's not where the focus of our faith is. Muslims put their faith in God, not in what happened to someone 2,000 years ago. It's irrelevant for our, our salvation now. Yeah. Um, I think they just spontaneously dropped, unfortunately. Oh, they
they don't like what we're talking about. Spirit. That, other spirits, they indeed. They don't like it. So, um, and if you look at Jesus' teaching in the earliest Gospels anyway, he doesn't refer, he doesn't refer to his death on the cross. He, he's, the way to forgiveness and salvation is through ways that are very similar that you'll find in the Quran, actually. The, the, the understanding of salvation is very, very, very similar, which is not surprising given from a Muslim point of view that he was sent by God anyway. That's what I find yeah. very difficult to reconcile is the fact that, you know, I hear from Christians saying that, oh, you can only be forgiven by the, by the death of Jesus. But Jesus went around forgiving people before his death. Mm. Yeah. He said, he said your faith has yeah. made you well and that kind of thing. So yeah, you your faith has made you well as well. Yeah, yeah. People, mm. you know. Oh, <laughs> please. He doesn't like it. No, 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 no. I don't have anything to add. That's, uh, that's good for thought. That's nice. Yeah, he went oh, around. He, okay. he, and he says the fact the Son of Man has, has authority to forgive sins. Yeah. So if he was going around forgiving sins beforehand, why does he need to go to the cross to forgive sins? And essentially, the pious Jews who were with Jesus praised God that he had given such authority to men. This is in Matthew chapter 9. I yeah, think exactly. Yeah, so yeah. if Jesus had that authority, it wasn't because he was God, it's because he was a human being who had been given that authority. The high priest, for example, had that authority uh, as well, the high priest in the temple, I mean, in Jerusalem. So this is something human beings can do if they're given, they're delegated that authority by God. If that happened that way, I'm not saying it did, I don't know. So that's not a proof of the de Jesus' deity, which is what Christians normally say. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not. Um, um, exactly. As I'm really. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to move on now because... I don't understand why a lot of the Christians here shouting you down, Paul. They don't have a good debate at this point, but they want to just get really aggressive. And so I think some of the Christians here now, they're starting to like, not say hello to me anymore because... I don't know, they, they don't like that I'm, I'm waking, waking up to that bit, you know, I mean, but they're getting a little bit... I'm not, they're quite, they're quite they're defensive. More... Yeah, they're very aggressive. But always remember the Christians here are a small minority of the global church. Most Christians I know are very good, decent people and are not like that. The, the extremists, you tend to get extremists down here, uh, people who have been radicalised. Um, you know, people like Hatun and others are, are, are very, very extreme and, and, and rejoice in uh, insulting um, Muslims and insulting the faith. And they, they do that all the time. Yeah. And they, they, they had that freedom in England to do that. They've chosen not to be so friendly with me for one reason. I think no. I know why, but they've, uh, but there's, 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 I don't want to say on camera, but there's, there's, I think there's a bigger, a bigger thing going on. Are they being funded? Are some of them being funded to? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. They, they keep it very secret if they were being funded, but they yeah. probably are, yeah, some of them, yeah. You know, you know, two other things that I, I, I recognise as well. If Jesus was supposed to die on the cross, why did one... One, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. He wouldn't have said that if he was supposed to die on the cross. And secondly, secondly, why is there a parable about um, putting to death the... the, the, uh, the was it the, the son... The, 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 the father's son and basically the, and, 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 and what is it what's the you know the parable the parable there's a parable basically where, where they wanted to kill the son of, of the owner of the house and and oh, the, uh, the, uh, son of the, master. the son of the master yeah they want yeah and they were gonna they were gonna try and kill him and because of that the owner of the house um, was was well, the, uh, the, the, son, the son's father was going to punish those people that were trying to kill the son. That's a parable, yeah. Yeah. So 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 uh, so 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 looking at that and thinking, if that's a parable about if Jesus was supposed to die, why would that why would that parable be there? Well, the parables don't tend to point to the Christian belief. They tend to point to a more Jewish or Islamic view. I mean, the uh, Jewish slash Islamic is pretty much synonymous actually in my view yeah. because Jews did not believe the Messiah would die or die for their sins or be raised on the third day or be a substitution for I mean none of this is Jewish this is uh, and it's not Islamic either so the Christian view with Paul associated with Paul and afterwards is is the odd one out it's not in the Jewish scriptures it's not in the Islamic scriptures it's, it's an inno what, what Muslims call an innovation it's, it's uh, an, a new idea that came about after Jesus one thing, like in the Quran, I find a little bit strange because mm. I'm not really, I don't have beliefs and stuff like that, you know. I, I, I'm a spiritual, spiritually minded. But um, it says, like, with, with Jesus, you know, mother, his mother Mary had to go out to the desert to give birth to him. So, you know, a stream appears, a, a, a plant, a tree appears. But then, you know, one of the first things Jesus could do was actually be able to speak. That was like the first, maybe the first miracle from him directly. Yeah. 
And I just, I just have issues. To me, it's, it doesn't seem very natural that a baby is so developed here, but it's a baby, but a baby. So for me, I kind of drop out at that point. It's well, you can. I mean, there are lots, it's a miracle, and there, there are lots of miracles associated with Jesus, from the virgin birth itself, which predates his speaking. So presumably, you have a problem with that as well. You have a, a problem with the virgin conception of Jesus as well. You have a problem with that too, do you? Because um, it, that's miraculous. Possibly so, but sometimes snakes and other creatures will have been known to um, just spontaneously just become pregnant if there's no males around, but they're just known to suddenly... Yeah. They're very violent. Yeah. They're very violent. No. So, um, what... We wanted to check on that bad side of the harem. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, I can't just ask a guy for his phone. Give us your phone, mate. Yeah, give us your wallet as well. Yeah. Well, it's not like I've never seen it before, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the, 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 the Christian claim, the Gospel's claim, is not spontaneous like snakes. It was a miracle. Um, yeah, they say and, that and miracle, but it's not something that's completely unnatural, even in mammals. I think well, it is. Recently, recently they found, there was, I think a mammal, a female spontaneously got, got mm. I think got But this is, no, you're, you're misunderstanding me. Sure, sure, Look, sure. it's a miracle. It's not me saying it's a miracle, but, but it happens in nature. It yeah. actually says it was a miracle because she hadn't known a man and the Holy Spirit yeah, yeah. Uh, c conceived of uh, yeah. Jesus in the womb of man. It's explicitly miraculous. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first miracle. Hang on a second. So, so, so uh, unless you have an anti-supernatural, anti-miraculous worldview, if you do, then you're going to have a problem with all the miracles. You can't say, oh, yeah. oh, well, I don't agree with Jesus being a baby. That's a miracle. Well, exactly. but you accept other miracles I you, I because you, you, you've got to be consistent I'm, here. I'm trying to read the spiritual messages between the lines because some oh. of the stuff I don't get. In, in terms of metaphysics, you know, how much is possible? Is levitation possible? Are these things possible? I'm not sure. Well, if you believe in God, I believe God exists and created the universe and he... he uh, th then I don't have a problem with... Mir I mean, miracles are something that God is free mm. to do if he wishes. It's not a problem intellectually I've at all. I've a few strange things. That really um, like but if you don't believe in God, then obviously might be different. So we've got to go back to the first question. Do, do, do you believe that God exists? Do you believe that God created the, the universe and so on? And, and then the yeah, idea of miracles are yeah, I easy. Really I, I, do, so I, don't, I, I struggle to believe completely in anything. I'm very logical, pragmatic. Um, but, but I'm not saying that this story is, I don't have um, some basis of truth. That's why I'm trying to work out uh, some truth between what, what, what we're reading and what we're seeing and what people are discussing here. And there are some elements of truth. And we, we do live, for me... How do you decide what's true and isn't based on your worldview? Because, yeah. you, you, you know, We've got to establish what, what's possible, what, what exists. Uh, and I say Muslims and Christians have uh, a view that God exists and he has communicated and sent revelation and prophets and so on. So the idea that God should, uh, of his own free will, do miracles is entirely consistent with that. It's not a problem. You know, if there's a God, God can certainly bring spiritual messages to my life things that come to me at certain times which help me to develop. You know, God wouldn't necessarily need me to read a book. Yeah, Muhammad was a literate, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's not necessarily a physical book. A book yeah, yeah. can be, um, uh, it can be a recitation, it can be... Uh, so, but to, to assume that God wouldn't have sent prophets, but he yeah. sends messages to you but, is a bit... But, but surely God isn't only for why, those... why can't God send messages to mankind and not yeah. just your private messages to you? But, sure, <laughs> but surely God isn't only for people who can read or people who, who, who can hear and, and, and have something recite and then be able to recite by hearing something. Surely God should be there for all humans. He anyway. is. And I think... He is. Well, so, well, why, is, why is God sending a message orally, verbally and through a book yeah not somehow for all mankind. You seem to be saying, oh, well, that's yeah. very limited. Well, well, how is that limited? Do, yeah, but do I therefore need um, to, to become a spiritual human being? Do I need to be able to read or have somebody bring a message to me? Because that can prejudice me, that can prejudice my mind. Well, what is it? We've got, we've got to find out what the message is first, because yeah. uh, for Muslims, the, the message very often is one of a reminder. It's not like brand new information that no one's ever heard of before. Uh, the, the, the idea is uh, it, for Muslims that the final revelation is a confirmation or reiteration or restatement a reminder yeah. of exactly the same essential message that was sent to all uh, peoples throughout history whether it be Moses back to right back to Adam uh, Noah uh, obviously Moses David the prophets and so on and many other prophets whose names most of them we don't know who they are um, so God's been busy communicating to mankind throughout the millennia um, and I don't see, I mean, that, that's, that's amazing. But so the, but the, but we, we should, okay. the, 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 our responsibility then is to 
listen to that message and um, and if I, if we got some beliefs which uh, some erroneous mistaken ideas that have crept in because of Chinese whispers or whatever, then we say, well, actually, this is the correct, pristine statement, and we see that now in the Quran. But, but, but how come, you know, so the Muslims, they don't agree with the covenant that Jesus made, so then a, you know, a new covenant was made. They, they do believe in the Quran. It explicitly says in uh, the fifth chapter of the Quran, I think it's verse 9 and 10, that um, God made a covenant with is the people of Israel and the covenant with the people of the book, sure. but they... Uh, they forgot a, a good deal of what they had been taught or they ignored a good deal and they changed the words it says in their scriptures the jews did that god hardened their hearts christians as well um, they, they forgot a good deal of what had been taught to them um, so you don't believe and, and the covenant was made with them so the, the, the quran actually explicitly mentions a covenant made with the people of the book so you don't believe that you don't believe the verse where jesus says that according to according to jesus the gospel his message in the gospel and everything is part of the eternal covenant. The where does he say that? Well, second, and, he where, where, where does he say that? He said the gospel, he's basically saying that... Where, well, where is he, no, no, don't give me basically, give me the quote. Well, I would love to, but <laughs> I haven't got a phone, so... But uh, he says... What's having a phone got to do says, with anything? Said, <laughs> you mean you don't have a Bible on you? No, no. <laughs> As but, if you're not having a phone is why he can't tell you about the Bible. No, no. I like that. Basically, he <laughs> said, he are, you, are you his mate? Are you his, no, are you his butler, by the way? <laughs> Should he be carrying his belongings and his... He's probably going to call one of these scam numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your phone, mate. Like, basically, you know. he says this is the blood of the of the of the second and the eternal covenant. I don't remember him saying that. I've got a question though. And so, if he did say it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hypothetical. You've got to establish what he did say first. Okay, so with the, mm. with the Ten Commandments, Moses, yeah. um, and there were other further commandments, two or three hundred of them or so, weren't there? Not, yeah, not three, 613. Um, yeah, yeah, some of them, and some of them were about having hair in a certain way, like curls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come so the Muslims don't have those calls? If they're keeping, uh, if they haven't created a new covenant with Islam, you know, with, with the Quran, then... then no, I didn't say they hadn't created a new covenant. I said that the revelation given uh, in the Quran, uh, which has been unchanged and uncorrupted, is a restatement or a reminder of the original revelations that had been either forgotten by uh, partially forgotten or ignored or changed by the Jews or the Christians or whoever. So it's not saying that what the Christians today believe is what Muslims believe because they've added beliefs about Jesus being God, for example, or dying for your sins. The Quran denies that explicitly. Yeah. So um, for if, if there were um, Jews had, had, had their covenant with Moses yeah. and the Christians had their covenant with Jesus, the new covenant, yeah. um, then the Muslims also, you've just said, have got a different covenant. They don't yeah. have to have a covenant. The, 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 so it's the, okay to have multiple covenants with God. Is that well, okay? Well, what, is a covenant, what is a covenant? Well, it's certain laws and agreements that are made. With it's a, yeah, it's agreement between God, God uh, and Moses or Noah, whoever. Yes, uh, but the, the Islamic, uh, the, the Muslim view, as I understand it, is that the final revelation given uh, to Muhammad uh, abrogates, yeah. abrogates all previous uh, arrangements or... or uh, but you'll find the essential teaching is the same, but the final one, yes, it has abrogated all previous ones, but it's mostly the same, actually, but there are some, some details that are different. But, but I don't know, I mean, it's a bit difficult. I mean, there's so many different covenants, and maybe the, those covenants help you to be a certain way with a certain relationship with God if you follow this path. Yeah, but the covenants are not for you. I mean, you're not Jewish, are you, I assume? It's not a great personal question. If you're, I assume you're not for the purpose of this. Then, you know, God's covenant with Moses is not for you. He, he, he made it with the people of Israel, and you're not one of them. But, uh, you but uh, I, I'm not a Jew, no. so, but, but, but God's final uh, covenant with mankind uh, comes through the final revelation given to the Prophet Muhammad, upon him be peace, and that's it. And that does apply to you and me, a Jew or non-Jew. Well, the Bible, does, the Bible does say that the final covenant was with Jesus. He, well, the, the covenant that it refers to, which is uh, Jeremiah 31, whatever it is, 31, 30, is, um, and 31, is, doesn't mention a covenant with the Gentiles. It's a covenant with a renewed covenant with Israel, with Jews, and it says that that God will write the law, the Torah, the 613 commandments of the law, on their hearts, and they will obey. No man will need to ask another man what the laws are. He will know himself. So, under this covenant, this that is in Jeremiah 30, uh, 31, which Christians refer to, it actually enjoins Torah observance, something that most Christians have abandoned. They're not following the covenant, the Jeremiah covenant, that, that, that you 
that the New Testament does refer to, because they have a, Paul abandoned the law. He and says, let me give you an example. The food laws, for example, according to Paul, all foods are now clean. You can eat what you like. You can eat pork. Mm, no, no. But the law itself says you can't eat pork. And Muslims in the renewed uh, final dispensation say, no, you, you, you can't eat pork. But Christians have, Christians have forgotten that or abandoned that and they don't follow the law anymore. So the people who are following the law of Moses, the, the covenant with Jesus and Moses are Muslims now. They're not Christians, unfortunately. I wish Christians were. No, so, I agree. Sorry. We it's, should be. I just stepped on someone. It's, 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 it's very important. It. It's very important to understand that that the the law is not done away with. Mm. It said, uh, James says that the. the um, Is he only pork? No. I haven't eaten. I haven't even eaten meat. He's a vegetarian, like, apparently. I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, but the, I had a potato the other day, and it had been in my drawer for a while, and it had the little kind of like the little things coming out. It's trying to, you know, what do you call, what do you call them? Worms. The roots. Worms. Yeah. <laughs> roots were coming out. And when it's I got off food. Right, so when I got that potato, I broke off the roots that were starting to grow out of it, and I put them in the microwave. I feel so guilty for having this this poor potato. I saved the roots. I broke them off. You feel guilty about eating a potato? I, You've lost I me here. Him. I nuked him in the microwave and oh, I ate I him. And I, I feel you like murdered a potato. Ah. Oh. Oh, oh. A pang of guilt. What's, what's, what's the penalty for that in the Bible? <laughs> Death, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. But you know, I did put a pang he of guilt. nuked a pota an innocent potato. I know, I know. It's difficult. God, I've heard some shocking description uh, sins in my life. I saved the roots. I put them in a little bag. I'm going to plant them out. I'm going to plant them out. Okay. In that case, you'll get we lots continue. of other continue, potato yeah. trees. Do they grow on trees? trees. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't grow on trees. I was joking. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put them in high pot over there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go up and move on now. I need a, I need a cup of tea or something. Thanks, Paul. That's really are you going off somewhere? I'm going, to get, I'm going to get a cup of tea. Yeah. Where are you going to go? Where I'm an going? Englishman. I need my tea, mate. Where are you going? Over there, probably. Do you mind if I join you? I don't know. But you're a vegetarian, aren't you? I can have a cup of tea. No, you can't. Why? You're a vegetarian. <laughs> anyway. You must be like the three stooges. Exactly, exactly. <laughs>